artists and animators. Abigail Lee is a storyboard artist currently working at Isle of Misfits. She created February, a month-long challenge for storyboard artists, now in its third year. And we invited Abigail onto our live stream to discuss her history hosting February and the results from this year's event. So Abigail, welcome to the stream. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much for talking to us today. So how would you describe February to someone who's never heard about it? Is it a, a, a hashtag about uh, skateboarding or about <laughs> boars or uh, uh, like what's is it dairy? Is it dairy related? Oh my gosh. Yeah. We talked about this like before the stream, but I was, I was saying how every year without fail, someone has replied to my post and, and was like, is this about boars? I thought it was about boars. And I'm like, no, it's in the little blurb that I wrote about a cha the challenge, which is February is a month long storyboarding challenge. Um, specifically, obviously, um, focusing on the storyboarding community and kind of uplift uplifting it. And it's, you know, you can, um, it's for sharing tips, you can just show your work, you can just connect with other people. So it's kind of like, similar to things like Drawtober and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how can artists participate in February and do they need to have like 30 to 50 uh, wild boars? Oh God. <laughs> I, I think that'd be a really scary feat if you try to storyboard under um, underneath that immense pressure. But um, <laughs> something that I really wanted to keep in mind when um, organizing February is to make it as approachable as possible because something that I struggled with other kind of everyday like prompt related uh, challenges is that that can be really overwhelming and daunting and it can really lead to some burnout and you can feel discouraged because you're like oh my goodness I didn't draw every day for 30 days straight doing a beautiful illustration every day so and storyboarding takes a lot of out of you so I was like hey as long as if as long as it's related to storyboarding and you hashtag February you have participated in February and you should pat yourself on the back because that's really cool. So I was like, you can do four panel boards. You can tell a story in four panels. You can do a little short, like little sequence every week. You could do just a month long project where you focus on one thing, or as long as it's, again, as long as it's um, relating to storyboard, storyboarding then it is participating in february so you can just be like hey i really struggle with art block when it comes to this here's some tips here's some like little drawing cha um challenge exercises that i do to get out of art block or i come upon this problem with um uh, like i want an easier way to do like like coloring things and storyboard pro here are some tips for that or you know here is like my favorite directors ever. I always go to them when I'm feeling like really creatively drained. And once I watch their movies, it's amazing. Like I really recommend these movies. So it's like, you can do anything as long as it's, you know, relating to storyboarding. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, the, the challenges with storyboarding is uh, it is a craft that a lot of viewers don't wind up seeing the, uh, your work in, you know, like you, you're, the craft of storyboarding does influence uh, very strongly the final image on the screen, but it is never any of the drawings uh, that are on screen. So um, with that in mind, like, would you say that um, February is a good opportunity for artists to highlight and showcase their work, um, develop portfolio pieces, things like that? For sure. I've always, I always find that a lot of people are enthusiastic about February. I'm already can't pronounce the challenge name, but we all they are excited about it because it is something that can motivate you for getting that portfolio board done. And I've like talked to my friend who's like, hey, I got hired because of that piece that I made for February. And I'm always like, oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. Cause it's like it kind of gives you a deadline. You're like, okay, I have a month. I really want to get this piece done for portfolio day. Let's do it during February and then I'll get it done and have something I'm really proud of. And I also found like, like you said, like not, I feel like growing up, I didn't really know about storyboard art artists, but due to the internet and how many re resources like people in the industry shared, I think a lot of, a lot of people became aware of that. And then February is just like, Hey, you can do storyboarding. It's not like this really scary thing. Like, again, I wanted to make it really approachable. And I had people 
always replying like every year without fail they're like can I participate in this like am I allowed to I'm like of course you are like it gets me really excited when I see that people are like I storyboarded for the first time because of this challenge and I found it really fun I'm like yay that's amazing makes me really happy so with that in mind what were some of your favorite entries this year um yeah I here I have on the screen I put like some of uh, the really cool uh, uh, entries that I found. And again, this is only a, a selection of them. There's been so many really cool um, pieces that people did. Um, so definitely go through the hashtag after the stream because people have done some amazing work and I think people even added more. But here's just some of them. This one by John, I really love how clean I'm like John's backgrounds are. It's something I want to get better at. It's really cool. And I really enjoyed the story because it was this cute little detective and their little pal. And it was a, a kind of a really nice story from beginning to end. Um, it was really enjoyable to flip through. So definitely check it out at, eight, at Ace of Stars. And then Tyler, Tyler, it, I always remember when she did February the first year because she blew my mind. She did like a really long sequence, like a animated kind of sequence, like every week based on a prompt, and that made me really happy and excited when I saw that. I really enjoyed it's so it. So clean that. too. It's so yeah. I just love like, like the it, little it, it is, I just want to take a moment because we're gonna get comments about it if I don't. But like it is okay for storyboards. In fact, it, 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 storyboards in many cases should be rough. Yes, for um, sure. But these look like they could be layout images from a like production. Like I, I oh, think these look excellent. For sure. Like I found that like even when my, making my portfolio stuff, I was like, oh my gosh, this is too messy. And then when getting hired on a production, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Like as long as it's clear, you don't have to make it all fancy. But I find that a lot of people for February, they're like, I want to make it all pretty and like cute. <laughs> so that's what they do. Yeah. Um, and then I really enjoyed this prompt by Abu Juice because it took Our a prompt fingers. from February, which makes me, it always makes me happy when people do the prompts. And I loved this prompt, Butterfingers, because I am very often clumsy. And this was really fun to watch. And like the payoff was really funny for this one. So I really enjoyed it. And then again, you don't have to do fancy, like, 10 minute animatics to participate in February. And I really enjoyed Ellie Dotmations. Like they're, they just did simple four um, panel boards, but I really love the motions that they have in their work as well. So here, just a selection of that. And then finally, again, you don't have to even draw to participate in February. And Michael Maloney always has really good tips on um, storyboarding. So it made me happy that he used the hashtag and it was like, Hey, here, I use storyboard pro and here's the cutter tool and it might be useful for you. So it really makes me happy when people are like, here's a thread. I love threads on Twitter and they're like giving you some really cool information. So here's just a selection, but again, definitely go through the hashtag because there's some really awesome work in there. So I want to just take a moment to read out some of the prompts, uh, from this year's February challenge. Uh, so you, see, these are some of the prompts that you posted. Um, morning routine, white lie, dream, watch out, let's <laughs> duel, film study, bang, butterfingers, uh, no dialogue, oops, and monster. <laughs> Can you walk me through like some of your thinking with these prompts? Like where did they come from? How did you come up with them? And what sort of reactions have you seen? Um, I think that the out of everything, I think the hardest thing when organizing February is coming up with the prompts. And I always like message my friends like in Discord, like and send them like the whole thing. I'm like, do you guys have suggestions? Is this fine? Because it gets harder and harder every year. And sometimes I like reuse old ones because I think they're really fun. Um, when it comes to thinking of prompts, I always do like things that are really open to interpretation. That's why I really like onom onomatopoeia prompts, like bang or knock knock in the previous year. Cause it's like, you can do anything with that prompt. It could be like an action thing with knock knock. It could be a knock knock joke or it could be knock knock. Cause there's a horrible eldritch being in your bathroom and you're like, oh my God, it's gonna come after me. So stuff like that. I like things like phrases or just like really, like cute cliche things like oh first crush like oh those like kind of feelings like those kind of scenarios 
and I also always have like um talk like dot I I think I like do like specific like kinds of scenes like dialogue scenes or talking head I had for a prompt because that is something you do a lot always on on productions it's like a talking head scene so it's like okay that's good practice and also film study because that's always fun good to have and um I really enjoyed like seeing what people like study when they do film studies like I'm like oh you picked that film and like that's a really cool study and I I I think that's really awesome and so yeah that's what goes through my thing or I think it's really funny like this prompt like this year I had would you love me if I was a worm and that was the most ridiculous <laughs> out of like the ordinary prompts I ever have I was like really tired I'm like you know what I think people would appreciate this prompt and people really did some fun stuff with that one so it made me happy uh going through some of the prompts uh for film study what are some films that like you look at in terms of um things that you you look to for studying like cinematography when working on storyboards um i i always i i've been trying to get into more horror and stuff like that Mm -hmm. but i'm really a big scaredy cat when it comes to horror so I one one thing that got me it it makes me sound like such a freaking nerd but the thing that got me into watching like my first horror thing was the haunting of hill house because they have on youtube I saw this thing was like they the longest shot ever like the really 30 minute like long shot and it's like they had to do a bunch of things and they had to do sets and I was like that's amazing I'll, I guess I'll watch this really, really scary TV show because of it, because I want to see, like, the actual outcome of, like, all the planning that they did, and, um, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the cinematography and that, so it's, like, kind of genre, and I guess, um, um, I, I like to look at, like, because I'm really into, like, oh, I would love, like, animated horror, so things like Coraline and kind of, like, how they use the medium, because I'm like, we need more animated horror, but there's not that much, so, yeah, stuff like that is what I look to, <laughs> to for, like, my boards of, like, oh, I'm going to do a horror board, I'm like, here are the horror things I'm going to look at, so. I think what's interesting with these prompts, too, is that, like, you could interpret them in a wide variety of styles mm-hmm. and genres, um so like any of these could be uh interpreted from a horror point of view or yeah. from maybe a rom-com point of view yes i love that too i just, oh yes i love rom-com stuff so it makes me happy yeah. when people do that well i i think one thing too is that like i think people come to certain genres and styles with certain preconceptions and and sometimes like when you uh really get into a genre you realize like wait uh rom-coms are great actually they're really funny we need more like modern rom-coms please bring them back yeah um yeah and it's also like it's so exciting to see what people bring to like their prompts like um when i feel like even though i don't have an order to these prompts a lot of people in the like on the left because they read from left to right they a lot of people do those prompts first and one that had a lot of entries was morning routine this year um because that the first of february kind of takes place during hourly comic day which you go through you know your whole day so i'm like oh maybe if you want to storyboard a little bit of your day you can do morning routine and it was really exciting to see like people's pets in the background like i saw a cat and a dog and i'm like oh my gosh that's so cute or like people in their life so that was really awesome um and like 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 i said i like per- i think i really wanted to make the prompts like vague so that you I can just see like oh this person really likes you know really gruesome like horror or this person like took this prompt and spun it to action I'm like I didn't even think of that at all while doing this like brainstorming the prompt so it's like it even surprises me so it's really cool uh yeah So, so what surprised you the most this year honestly I was like I, I honestly thought like not as many people would participate for some reason. So it really made me happy to see like people like still like, getting excited and um, participating. And like another thing that we did this year was a lot of like giveaways and 
um, you know, people responding with like what type of like responding to prompts is like, oh, this is what I do when I'm art block and stuff like that. So getting that kind of engagement and seeing like everyone's takes on that was really cool. And also, I think this year I saw a lot more personal projects than like prompts, which I am all for. So I got to see like that. That was surprising in a good way because I got to see like, oh, this person was like working on the store for a long time and they're using February as a way to like get it to fruition get their little child their little story child out to the world so I'm like oh that's awesome look at these OCs look at these characters so yeah that's so cool uh so one of the the categories of prompts I want to highlight we we're talking about a little bit earlier before we streamed uh there are a number that are automatopias like bang and <laughs> watch out what yeah. <laughs> um, how did you see people approach those? Um, I feel like I I feel like um for I don't know I I I I don't know if I remember like a lot of people doing those, but I think in the past like it's like short little snippets to and I find that really interesting. It's just like that action, like oops, and it's like a little snip. It, it's kind of like the payoff to the whole thing, like. It, I'm like, I'm like going through it. I'm like, what is this? Is, is this a prompt I put? And then at the end, it's like kind of the payoff. It's like, oh, oops. And it's like, oh, that's where it is. Okay. So th that's kind of how I see people approach it, which is really cool. So one of the things that can be difficult about working on personal projects is the blank page. And I, I think what's really cool about February is that it gives people prompts as, as a starting point, as a place to work from. Um, what do you feel that artists get out of participating in February and why might they want to participate? Um, I just, I feel like just getting excited about seeing other people's projects is what gets me like into February and just, I don't know. I, I, I find like, it's a really, like I said before, it's a really good kind of motivator to get your work done. Cause you're like, Oh, oh my goodness. I'm like four weeks to get this project done. Um, and I always find that I really can't get stuff done unless I had like a self-imposed like deadline. So that, that kind of why I like created this, but I feel like, you know what, like just, if you're interested in storyboarding and you've always want, you've always been scared because it kind of maybe you're like, oh my gosh, that's only for industry professionals. And I don't know if I've ever could do it. It's kind of like, this is like a little, little thing you can dip your toe into. It's, it's very casual. It's very casual. Like I said, you can just write like, oh, here's a tip for February dairy and you participated in it. But I feel like it, I would encourage you, like, if you're a little iffy or a little scared, like, definitely use this as kind of a motivator to get into storyboarding if you've always wanted to, but never really had the courage or motivation to. So, yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of um, professional uh, groups and uh, communities that can be a little bit like insular standoffish. And I feel like the storyboard, especially like the Twitter storyboarding community uh, is very generous, very um, open to like talking about their processes, sharing their work um, in, in a way that like first surprised me when I encountered it. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, how has the community around February grown since you first started the project in 2021? I honestly feel like the creation of February was because that the, the storyboarding community was so generous with the resources that they make and the insight that they have. And they're very transparent with like things that they might go through, like, oh, like here's here are just some tips or what I go through art block or you don't have to, or just, I don't know, it's very generous. And I think that that's why before February, I made like resources for animation because people were so, they're like, here's what, they wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to get into the craft or to not feel, or to just get all this information that would benefit for them to get into animation. And um, I, I feel like, I feel like February might never get as much traction as it did in 2021 due to it being like during sh the pandemic at its peak and you know ever more people was 
were like kind of cooped in and they had more free time to do it. But I think I was very pleasantly surprised that by the reaction it got this year, because I was expecting like, oh, maybe no, no one's going to participate. But I was like, oh, my gosh, people are participating and they're having fun. So, yeah, that made me happy. Yeah, well, you started in February 2021, which was towards the end of the first year of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, where were you, like, in your career as a storyboard artist when you started February? I wasn't even in, I like graduated in 2020 into the pandemic, and that was a very, you know, scary time. And I honestly, I feel like the creation of February was also to motivate me because I, I wasn't employed during. February of 2021. And um, I, I kind of like, like I said, used it to mo- to to make pieces that eventually got me to where I am now. And I, I was honestly really surprised at, at the response to it. And even Toon Boom was like, Hey, would you like to interview like about the creation of February Aries? So I think even though I can't um, participate as much as like the first year I made it because I had work and stuff like that I'm like hey you know I made it I meant for I made for bordery for people like me who can't really participate but I'm participating by you know here's like a thread on like tips and stuff like that which is really funny to me (laughs) that I kind of went full circle in that way but yeah that's where I was when I created for bordery um of the uh February prompts for 2023 which one do you say would be uh the most challenging like if someone wanted to go back into those prompts and uh make some practice boards uh where would you point them um i I, it's been so long since i looked at the prompts i don't know if i can even remember all of them i feel like i don't know if it's the most challenging but i feel like the no dialogue one could be a nice kind of challenge because I feel like, especially for portfolio boards, something that recruiters might not, I feel like your boards should like, you know, stand by it's, or like be easy to understand without dialogue, but like to emphasize Mm -hmm. like no dialogue, because if you're doing a portfolio board, like recruiters might not like read through the dialogue, but that could be a challenge or, um, if I could uh, like to plug the prompt that I like the most, if I could, (laughs) would you love me if I was a worm? If you take that, because I feel like people have run down that prompt a lot because I, I, I picked it because I've seen the meme everywhere, but if like you take that and like add your own little spin that makes it really new and fresh, that could be a challenge as well. Cause it's like, how many times could you do that prompt in a really cool and fresh way? So (laughs) yeah, something like that. Do your coworkers ever talk to you about February? Uh, I'm too shy, so I don't really talk about my Twitter stuff or like February. But I do talk to like friends who are other storyboard artists who I'm like, hey, here's this thing that would be really cool. Or disc or storyboarding discords that I'm in. I'm like, hey, would you guys want to participate in that? So I share it in that way. <laughs> If we uh, zoom out a bit, like, what do you enjoy about the craft of storyboarding? What made you want to become a storyboard artist? Um, I, I, what attracted to me, me to storyboarding was it's kind of like, it, it, you become like your own director when it comes to your personal projects without like doing like all the animation and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, that, that, that looks really underwhelming, but it's like, hey, you can story about storyboard whatever like magnum opus or whatever really cool story you have in your head just through boards and it can be really emotional and really cool or really it it can bring a lot of emotion out of people and I find I found that really attractive and also I really like kind of the more um when you're working in animation the more um was it like you're working with other people more collaborative aspect so it's like when you're working on your own stuff, you're you kind of are your own director and you can add so many things and like really get your vision to come to life. When you're working with other people, it's kind of like a problem solving thing. You're like, okay, we have to follow what our director is saying. There's so there's like there's some like restrictions and rules, and we can use that to kind of mold our way into getting whatever the director wants. So it's kind of like a problem solving thing, but there's also like 
there's also like tried and true kind of solutions and you can experiment and there's like so many combinations that you can do to like kind of bring kind of um bring your director's vision to life so those both of those aspects attracted me to storyboarding yeah are there any misconceptions that you've encountered about storyboarding uh in in particular uh with like the context of february i always have people like reply to my february post and they're like am i allowed to do this like can i do this i'm like this is for everyone i feel like maybe storyboarding is like i said before oh it people might think oh that's only for professionals like only people who worked in film or animation are allowed to do that it's like no anyone can do it as long, you can do it on little sticky notes like if you do put like four panels together it's like you boarded something also it's like if you've done storyboards you can call yourself a storyboard artist like that's you've created something like that which is really cool so i i just making it more approachable for people because a lot of people don't know what storyboards are compared to like illustrations so yeah um do you have any advice for artists who might be watching this live stream who are interested in dipping their toe into uh, online storyboarding communities um i would like get involved like in things like february like Twitter is what where I found a lot of community and a lot of my friends because I would just be like reply to their tweet and like hey that's a really cool illustration or oh my goodness that storyboard you did it made it gave me chills because it was, it was really cool so it's like starting like those conversations not because it's like you want to get in but you genuinely enjoy other people's work and then they come in your work and you're kind of like you you build up that bond like that so you also just like retweeting like other storyboard artists were like getting excited about their work as well um i feel like that can bring a lot of community or so yeah <laughs> if that makes sense yeah. no that it makes perfect sense um, do you have advice for students who might be interested in a career as a storyboard artist for 2D animation? Um, I feel like uh, the biggest advice I would give for when you're preparing your portfolio or um, and stuff like that is only draw what you enjoy drawing. Like only board or put whatever in your portfolio, whatever you enjoy because you're going to get hired for whatever that is. And I feel like in the beginning of when I was really stressed about jobs, I'd be like, oh, there's this formula that I have to follow. It's like, oh, I, I can't, I need one, one like comedy, one action one. And that's like, that's good to know. Cause it's like having a different genre thing um, can, make you more like attractive to um like employers but it's like you can spin action to something that's more to your taste like if you see oh like action boards from other storyboard artists you're like oh that's exactly what it has to be it's like no what do you like what can you add to the genre of action and how would you make that into an action board or if you don't if you find if you um board action and you hate it and you're like this sucks don't force yourself to board action to get a job because that's what you're gonna do like i said and because i was scared of boarding horror so i'm like you know not, that's maybe not the most attractive thing but i'm like you know what i want to do it and people are like they might find things like their production might not necessarily be horror, but they really liked your shot choices or they really liked the gestures that you had or they really liked your the emotion, um, the expressiveness of the emotions. So it's like that won't bar or scare people away. So, and you're gonna be doing this over and over again until you get a job. So don't make yourself miserable by boarding things that you don't like because that that I I had in the past like storyboard something because I'm like oh I think this is what people would want and it kind of drained because so much gets put into a, a board so that just drained me. Speaking of like creativity and energy, uh, it can be really hard to be working in a creative profession and also uh, do creative work in your free time. So how do you stay motivated to work on projects like February? Uh, I honestly feel like I'm still figuring that out because when I'm on, on like productions, I 
kind of get I kind of become like one one track zone and I kind of give a lot of my energy for that but I feel like you know you just give yourself like an hour a week to do something that you want to do kind of like siphoning that time could help you and also if you want to participate in February like don't beat up yourself beat yourself up if you can't do like a really extravagant board if you just do a simple really powerful five panel board that gets a really cool idea across that is something creative that, that you can do and you're like hey that's a really cool idea and once i get more energy i can maybe turn that five panel board into something that is a bit longer and more um, intense yeah uh, one thing I wanted to also talk about, so um, with personal projects, a lot of storyboard artists will like really polish their boards. Uh, is that something that like productions expect? No, not at all. I mean, I've, I've, I'm still new. I'm still like young in this industry. I haven't worked on like, a, like I've worked on three productions. So it very much varies, but I find that it's definitely not to the level at least the productions I've been on that you might see on on um, social media and sometimes like the deadline you can't add all the extra flim flam that you see because the deadline is like tomorrow you're like okay this is clear enough the director said that's good enough I'm just gonna do it like that um, obviously there's like some really clean like maybe more 2D animation like productions but there's usually a purpose for that and more mm -hmm. than like, oh, I'm going to make this pretty. It's like, no, there's a clear like, oh, OK, um, this this is like this because of the overseas animators. But for like personal projects I've seen by like professionals, it's more like I I find this really fun and I'm going to add this because it's a really cute like thing because I'm like, I added really some really spooky lighting that maybe I wouldn't have added or if it was a production board. But I'm like, you know what? I want to make it pretty. I want to make it really spooky and add a, a little more edge. So that's for my for my personal boards. I add some of that. Um, are there uh, tools in Storyboard Pro that like you learned on productions that you, you wish you learned earlier or that more artists should be aware of? I honestly learned a lot of stuff just from talking to friends um more than productions which is really funny um, i was like automat is the best thing ever and i always constantly uh, yes. tell people please this saves my life i love it so much also like um seeing renumber uh renaming like you can do that really quickly and i'm like oh my god that's awesome so and that's i found a lot of that information also on twitter and that's why i love twitter and the server community because a lot of people like share tips they're like oh my gosh look at this i found this really cool thing from storyboard pro so yeah i just i, I talked to a lot of friends and it's really funny because sometimes i'm like talking to a friend who's like on a production and they're like oh i didn't know about that i'm like really that like spends my time all this time so it's kind of that exchange um for uh, a lot of artists, like they, they might think that um, th th there are certain ways that they, they have to board. You're talking about like if you don't want to make this type of scene, uh, maybe maybe don't do that. Uh, it's also important to keep in mind too that like different studios are looking for different skills from artists. Productions are very different exactly. in terms of like what their expectations for boards are. There isn't necessarily like one right way or wrong way to do things. Um, what were some of like the biggest things that like you learned since entering the, uh, the, the, the industry? Um, I guess just, I've always been too clean, a little bit too clean on my productions. And I really had to learn to let that go. Say, like, Hey, this is enough stop it's like you need to hit this deadline and you shouldn't beat yourself up over it because you want to make something a little clean and that's like not because i'm like oh i want to make it pretty sometimes it's like that's just ingrained it's like oh i gotta like really connect things and it's like hey it's just hold back draw back because you have to hit a deadline and um they a production it, it's not fair to the people like who might get delayed if um if you're just like taking forever on each panel and that's like i've heard like advice of like time yourself on like it's like give yourself only like only a minute or only 30 seconds so it can just constantly move you because it's like you you just don't have that time so i i still struggle with that though so i still have to learn um for that 
and just you know naming conventions is always good to know and just communicating like with your director a lot it's like hey this shot is like this note was like this but the it's kind of like breaking this next scene like what should i do like and they're like oh okay like i will uh do it this way and you're like okay so just communication is very big when it comes to February, what are you um, most proud of or happiest with in terms of the the, the reaction? Um, I, I I don't know. It's just I don't I don't know what I'm the most proudest of. I think I was really proud of doing the streams last year, like organizing because I was like I had to organize a bunch of storyboard artists together to do a stream every week, and I still don't know how I did that. So that's something I'm like, wow, that was really cool. But I don't know, I'm just proud that I created something that like makes people excited about the craft or like got people to make really cool things. I think that's awesome. It is super cool. What was the uh, your experience of running the stream like this year? Um, I I it was very much more low key this year because I just did not have the bandwidth to organize something like that. Um, and it was just you know, going through the tag and reacting to everyone's work, which was really fun. It was really cool seeing people's in the chat, like being like, oh, I really like that one. Or, oh, that gave that, uh, that like action, like, or that camera move was really awesome. So that was really cool. It was a, it was a more chill stream for sure though, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, I don't expect you to have this like number of, uh, on a hand, but like how many um, entries would you have expected that you received this year? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> um, I, I, um, because also it kind of gets mixed in with like other past entries too. When I go through the tags, so I have to go through latest. Right. I, I think there are a lot more because I, I, because of the giveaway stuff that I did, there are a lot more responses of people's like, oh, this is what I do when I'm art, art block, and this is what I do when, um, or this is what motivates me to storyboard. So that was really interesting to read through. And I enjoyed like seeing people's entries. I don't, I definitely don't think as much as like the past two years, but it, it was still a fair amount. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I can't give you a number. That, that, that's fair. Um, were there any prompts that you uh, didn't have a chance to include this year, but you like really wanted to include? I don't think so because I think it's a struggle to like get sometimes to get to the amount of prompts that I put in because I'm like my brain is just like work my there's just hamster wheels going in my brain because I'm like is this interesting is this fun I think sometimes I wish I'm like oh I want this prompt but we already did last year so and we already have a lot of repeat prompts like I really like knock knock because I keep on mentioning it but I'm like I've done that already and so you know we got to do something new <laughs> this year do you see um, artists ever go back to like previous prompts or, or, or use them in personal projects? Um, I do incur I do I do like reply with like the past prompts, saying that hey, you guys can still use it. But I don't think I remember seeing people use past prompts. Maybe I, mm. I just haven't looked through the tag more. But yeah, I feel like this year, especially people did more like not really following the prompts, but just doing a personal project with their with uh, with a story that they really wanted to do for a long time, which I thought was really cool and fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at the list again, and, and so many of them are excellent. I mean, even uh, Wait a Minute, uh, Just Sing, Red Flag, the, uh, the ones <laughs> at the Red end Flag. of the list. Uh, I mean, th th there's so much you can do with those. Um, do you feel that because of like the way it's listed, a lot of the prompts got like very front-loaded, like people gravitated towards the, uh, the front of the list? Yeah, I feel like... As, especially for morning routine, I saw a bunch, but yeah, maybe I should just like next time, like put my most favorite prompt at the top left. Cause I'm like, I really want a lot of people to do this. Yeah. Sometimes this I, year, I, everyone oh, is doing, would you love me if I was a worm? Oh my God. <laughs> I think people still gravitate to that just because it's a really funny prompt, but I, I would love to see more do, people do red flags. I'm like, how would you kind of illustrate that in a board? I'm curious to see. <laughs> Are there any um, uh, accounts or um, Discord servers that you recommend our audience follows? 
Uh, I really enjoy um, the story group Discord. I think that's what it's called. I do list like all the Discords in the like Google Doc that I have that I can like. But that's the one run by Jay Collender, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 Um. Let me see. The animation story group. Um, that's one. Uh, and uh, I I'm trying to think. Rise up animation is also another one. I think if you become a mentee, you can also. I haven't like been as active in Discords like lately, so I'm trying to like think back in my brain. I know women. If you join like women in animation, you can also join their Discord. Mm, yeah, I, there are a yeah. ton of great mentorship organizations like yeah, for sure. animation, Women in Animation. Um, I uh, can't say enough good things about them. They're excellent. Uh, we got a question in the chat. Uh, Ricky Charms is asking, uh, how early do you start thinking about next year's February? Uh, I usually think about around December. Like okay. something like that. Um, honestly, like with the streams, I like last year I kind of did it pretty like did I I think that was more like I think I planned more in advance for that because I had a bunch of people I could be wrong because they they might come to me like you just messaged me like the day before it happened which could be very true I just don't remember but yeah January f December is when I start like beginning January is when I start planning and uh, do you have any hints for things you might be thinking of next year? I have not thought of that far ahead. <laughs> we're not December yet. <laughs> yes, we're not December yet. All right. Well, Abigail, I wanted to ask you, and this is our, our most important question, uh, where can our viewers see uh, more details about February entries and also more of your work online? Uh, if you just go through the hashtag February, the most hard to pronounce slash spell challenge ever. But if you go, I, I think it's yeah, it's the most active on Twitter for sure. But you can also find some entries um, on Instagram as well. But just go hashtag February. Um, you can also go to my Twitter at that's when I, where I'm the most active for sure, which is at Abigail, E-B-B-I-G-A-L. Um, and you can just scroll down and you can see the prompt list and stuff like that and the hashtag and even the stream that I, I held showcasing people's work. And then on Instagram, I'm at E-B-B-I-G-A-L underscore. So you can find me there. And if you want to look at my some of my storyboards that I have made, um, just to, you know, or some of my comics or the work that I've done, you can go to my website, which is abbyleestory.com. All right. Are there any other uh, projects that you want to show off or share? Um, it, it, now might be the time to do it. Oh, when I'm not, I, honestly, when I'm not storyboarding for my job, I really enjoy doing comics and stuff like that, especially horror comics. So if you, I guess I can go to my tab here, but yeah, these are some of my comics as well. And I'm actually going to like table at TCAF in Toronto if you want to swing by. I'm going to be on the third floor. That's so cool. Um, and yeah, like if you follow me on Twitter, you can see those kinds of projects. And if you like horror, like hit me up. I'm a really big scaredy cat. I like creating it and reading it, not watching it because I can't. I like watch like this. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, really I have like always it. wanted to go to TCAF. It's uh, oh, I went like last year as a just a person, you know, not tabling. And it was so much fun. I really enjoyed yeah. that. It, it, it's a comic convention with a, a very different vibe than a lot of other comic book conventions mm -hmm. where like people aren't really in costume. It's more about the, uh, the creators. Yes. It's, it's, I really love the indie comic scene. I'm all, I also will be at CXC, which is in Ohio. So if you want to see me there as well, but yeah, I'm really excited for comics. So, yeah. All right. Well, Thank you so much, Abigail, and to our audience for joining us for this discussion. Next week, we'll be hosting the Animation Trends event, which includes three whole days of free panel discussions and yeah. interviews from like March 28th to the 30th. So uh, Abigail, I can see you're interested, but our, our viewers can also register for the event at toonboom.com. And we hope to see you all there. So Yay. be sure to tune in next week. Nice. Thank you so much for having me.
Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>